What's up guys, hope you're having a good day. In this video, we're going to be recapping UFC 259 and going over our betting performance to see what we did good, what we did bad on, where we make money, where we lost money and what we can learn from it and all that kind of stuff. We're going to go through all our bets, every single bet we placed and talk about them. And I just want to apologise before we get into this video. I would like to apologise for any any bad language or anything I say in this video that may offend people. I'm really fucking sorry, but I'm still a little bit salty about how Saturday went. Now, the irony of all this is that I actually made a really good profit on Saturday. I'm actually laughing. Is this funny? I made a really good profit on Saturday. I think it was because the two live bets that we had. I don't even know why I'm laughing. It's just stupid. The two live bets that we had, I was able to get in on like pretty much all the sites that I'm live betting on at the moment. But for some reason, I'm really fucking pissed about how Saturday went. I'm like super salty and I know I shouldn't laugh. It's masking my anger. But usually if I make a loss on something or if I take a loss, I could just shake it off. Like, within a day or two. Do you know what I mean? Like, if it's a fair and square loss. Like I bet Israel Adesanya on the weekend, right? He lost fair and square. Literally, five minutes after the fight's done, I've forgotten about me. It's, it's done. Like, loss, fair and square, you move on. Because part of this game is you've got to be able to move on, right? You've got to be able to control your emotions. You can't go on tilt. You can't get lost. You can't let losses affect you. Because then, obviously, that affects your ability to bet, Right? You know what I mean? you got to keep a level head. So, I lost money on Adesanya. Five minutes later, boom! Done. Congratulations, Mr. Blackovich. Uh, very well played, sir. Brilliant performance. You know, maybe if I get a really bad judging decision go against me, like a bla ba bad decision, right? Might take me like a day to get over it. But for some fucking reason, we're now Monday afternoon, and I am still incredibly triggered by the Petey Ann Aljamain Sterling fight. I'm just triggered. It wasn't like I lost tons of money on Petey Ann anyway. Like I'm saying, I made a profit last weekend, like a bloody good profit as well, but I'm just fucking triggered. And when I think that I'm just starting to get over the whole situation, when I think I'm starting to feel better, this morning I wake up, like most of us do, first thing we do, we go on our phone, we just start browsing through our phone, you know, browsing through Instagram, browsing through Twitter, this morning, you know, I'm ready for a new event now, a new week, ready to jump into fight research. We got, you know, 14 fights to get into this week. I'm ready to just shake off the whole PEN situation and forget about it. What happens? Come on my phone, first thing, boom! What do I see? What do I fucking see? The very first thing I wake up to is this fucking picture here. This fucking picture here, and I am triggered by this picture so fucking much. I'm just triggered, man. This picture says to me that this dude, Aljamain Sterling, is just celebrating his win. He's showing off his belt. He's very happy with his work on Saturday night. It just fucking triggers me. See this phone? This phone here. It's a very nice phone. This is an iPhone 12 Pro. Expensive phone. I don't want to break this phone because I don't want to have to buy a new one. It costs a lot of money. Literally when I saw this picture, it took every single piece of fucking self-control not to smash this phone into a million pieces. I literally woke up. I saw this picture. I just wanted to throw my phone out the window. I'm so fucking triggered by what's happened with this fight. We'll get into it. But I'm just fucking triggered to the point where I need to get his face off my screen. Because I can't fucking take it. Anyway, let's get into how we did last week. Let's start off with live betting. Let's get the positives out the way. Live betting <laughs> live betting's always a positive, right? We had two live bets on the weekend. Uh, we won both of them. We went 2-0 and for the night for around 2.5 units of profit. Two units. It doesn't really matter what the profit was, right? As long as you're making money, who gives a fuck? But yeah, we hit two winners in live betting. That kept our winning run going. Let's see how big the winning run is now. If we go all the way back to July. July was the last time we took a notable loss live betting on the UFC. So the last time we took a, a notable loss live betting UFC was uh, 25th of July. It was the Till versus Whitaker card. Since then, if we take Bellator out of the equation, we've gone 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, call this virtually break even. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, f 
14, 15, 16, took an L there, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we made a profit on 22 of the last 23 UFC events, live bettings. We're on a phenomenal run. We're absolutely crushing. Unfortunately, like what always happens when we go on a big winning run, is the spaces in the live betting group do fill up. I did mention it in last week's video that it was going to happen. I've been mentioning it for the last few weeks. I was saying, if you want to join the live betting group, you want to jump on board, join the team. You have to do it soon because these spaces are going to fill up. Uh, they have now filled up. So all live betting subscriptions, memberships have now sold. So if you come to the site and you try to sign up for live betting, you'll see that you'll now be met with sold out messages, which is very, very unfortunate. Uh, I wish I didn't have to put a cap on the number of people that could live bet with us. But obviously, the more people that try to place the same bets at the same time, the faster the odds decline and become suspended. So kind of got to keep a lid on it, you know, keep keep, keep the group small. Um, you can still buy single event passes, which are $50 per event. However, there are a very, very, very limited number, as you can see, five memberships available. There's a very limited number for each event. So I'm sure they're going to sell out fast, probably every Monday. So if you do want to, uh, if, if you do want to obviously just, you know, try and jump on these before they sell out just keep an eye on the website on monday what i am going to try and do in like the medium medium term like sometime over the next few weeks is i'm trying to i'm going to try and build up like a karma system where if you're like a vip membership if you've been a member of the site for a while if you have bought you know lots of single event passes in the past uh, you will be given priority access to 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 buy these basically on a weekly basis uh, but I just haven't got that in place yet. But I have had to shut the site down to new signups. It is regrettable. Um, but you just, just, just need to do that just to kind of, you know, manage liquidity, I guess, and make sure that people in the group can still place bets at decent odds. If you are, there are a few people. So most people pay monthly for the elite memberships and the prime memberships. If you do pay three months non-recurring there's only a small number of people that do but if you do pay three months non-recurring if you go to try and renew your uh, membership now they will actually come up as sold out so basically get in contact with me and i will talk you through how you can uh, basically renew your membership through the account section of your website if you can't work out how to do it yourself just like send me an email send me a dm so if you if your non-recurring membership does expire don't worry don't think you've lost your place uh, just send me a message we'll get you renewed if you're on the three month you've got your, your space confirmed all that i won't let it go anywhere but the uh the the memberships are now closed to new people but Maybe you can, uh, maybe you can, you know, if you're really quick on a Monday, you can jump in and hit these spaces. So yeah, that's it for live betting. Another profitable week. Kept the chains moving, and uh, yeah, not the best event for live betting, but two and zero can't argue with that. You know, if I went two and zero every week, I'd be pretty happy, pretty happy. Okay, so we now go on to what should we talk about? Should we talk about official bets then? Official bets. Let's get into it. So I had three official bets. Uh, on this card, we went for three units on Sean Brady to beat Jake Matthews. He came through for us in a big way. Two units on Pete Yan to beat Aljamain Sterling. I'm getting triggered even saying the word Aljamain Sterling. And Jan Blakovic, uh, we bet on Israel Adesanya to beat uh, Jan Blakovic. Now, over the last few weeks where we've been talking about this official bet, these official bets, we've been saying how we need to come up with like a new name for them. Because obviously with the lab, the website, you know, the, the type of bets that you know, where we do the type of bets we're doing now have evolved, right? In the past, it would just be official bets where you get like two to three bets every week. Whereas now, with the lab, you know, I think last weekend we had something like 20 bets or something in the, in the lab, even more if you include the prop bets. So, need to think of a different way to structure this because I think it's getting to the point where the lab is going so well it makes sense to stop putting so much emphasis on official bets and just like figure out a better way of doing things. Um, so what I have been thinking of, obviously one of the loose betting experiments we have is the tight betting strategy. 
But because the very nature of the type betting strategy is to, you know, only place bets on things we feel super confident in, we haven't really had that many bets that fitted this profile. You know, you can see we've only had six in the last year, which have, you know, equated to literally break even 0.01 units. So this seems like a bit of a waste. And since our official bets are you know, bets that we place which we're we're super confident in anyway. You know, they're they they you know tight bets by nature. I was thinking maybe we should just turn the official bets into tight bets and and basically, you know, make this tight bet an experiment, you know, um, continuation of the official bets and maybe just change you know, change the type betting experiment from an experiment to just type bets. I don't know. We're still in kind of like a discovery phase, right? Where we're working everything out. We're constantly improving, constantly trying to find the best way to do things. But since we take like that sniper approach to official bets where, you know, we're only putting our money in super strong positions and, you know, we've got a really, really long history of profits on these bets. I just thought that, you know that could work quite well but let me know in in the chat room on the website let me know in the comments uh, on youtube what you think i would appreciate if you only let me know what you think if you are a member of the site because i try and make decisions um based on you know how the community as a whole feels but yeah we need to think of a new way of um kind of classifying these bets because i feel that some of the lab experiments now have proved themselves enough to maybe bump their credibility up a little bit so seems a little bit strange for official bets to have so much credibility when they are being outperformed by some lab bets this point was always going to come if these experiments proved uh, to be as profitable as they have been so i guess it's just a time in the life cycle of our community where we just need to restructure things and find a better way of doing it but anyway let's go through the official official bets right so Sean Brady to beat Jake Matthews. He came through for us in a big way. Uh, looked great. Uh, to be honest with you, there were a couple of surprises in this fight. I honestly thought that Jake Matthews had improved his boxing a lot. I thought Matthews' boxing against Brady looked better than it has done ever, really. I, I was quite impressed with Jake Matthews striking. Caused Brady some trouble. And, uh, you know, if Brady hadn't been able to use his grappling to take Matthews down, cause him trouble on the ground, that fight could have been... You know, way too close for comfort. So, thankfully, Brady used his grappling, his fight IQ to come through for us in a big way. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm very, very happy with his performance. Very happy with a nice big winner on Mr. Brady. So, then, obviously, we were quite high on P.E. and all week. And uh, he absolutely dominated, man. Outclassed Aljamain Sterling, dominated in every single department you could possibly want to dominate in. Uh, I, I, in, in the live betting commentary... You know, at the end of the third round, I said, literally said, Aljamain needs needs a miracle. Basically, I said this is this is about as checkmate a fight as you are ever gonna see. It's a complete shutout at this point in the fight. Aljamain Sterling has virtually no path to victory. Like he needs a miracle. Something insane would have to happen in order for Yan to lose this. And unfortunately. You know, I mean, something insane did happen. I was already counting my money on this one. And what's really, really frustrating uh, about the way this fight played out is that, you know, both guys were at even money. You know what I mean? Which meant that the bookies gave both guys an equal probability of winning. But we did the work, you know, we spent two hours researching this fight. Um, we had a really good read on it. I feel that, you know, if you go back and watch our breakdown video on that fight, we read it perfectly. It went like it was almost as if you know we could have written the script on how that fight was going to play out, and you could have got two actors to play out the script, and it would have looked a lot like the fight ended up playing out. Pete Yan did everything we said he was going to do, but we ended up taking a loss, which is absolutely fucking brutal. It is very brutal. It's brutal because you know, with how dominant Yan was, when these guy, guys rematch, you're never going to be able to bet Yan at anywhere near that odds range i know that early odds have already been released for the rematch and i think yan is like a 1.40 favorite which is about minus 250 but realistically those odds aren't going to stick you know liquidity is ultra low on those early odds that have been released and so by the time liquidity builds up and you know people like us get a chance to bet 
a reasonably big amount of money on a guy like Yan, you know, the odds will have got absolutely smashed down to 1.20, which is like minus 500. So it's really frustrating because not only do we miss out on a really solid winner, but we're also not going to get a chance to get any of that money back because in the rematch, Yan is going to be too big of a favourite to bet. So I'm super fucking salty over it. The illegal knee. Did damage, right? Like. The the only the only ruling the only ruling there that makes sense is Sterling by disqualification. Like the illegal knee was bad. You gotta disqualify Yan. Like it was you know, Sterling had to win that fight by disqualification. Like the real shame in all of this, I don't wanna be detrimental to Sterling. I don't wanna criticize Sterling. Because he did what he had to do. But the most unfortunate part of that whole series of events for me. Was that Sterling then had to act. You know what I mean? Like he had to act. And play. Kind of like play up how hurt he was. Let's be fucking real here for one second. We saw Marlon Moraes literally send Aljamain Sterling to the shadow realm. With a knee to the head. Do you know what I mean? He literally went to the Shadow Realm. Like, he came back... Like, and left a part of him there, man. Like, he came back a different man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he came back with, like, souvenirs... From the Shadow Realm. That's how fucking deep into the Shadow Realm... He got sent by Marlon Marais. And he didn't react like that. He wasn't as badly hurt. That knee that Yan delivered was a bad knee. But... Sterling didn't really need to react the way he did. Sterling did what he needed to do to get the referee to stop the fight. And for me, I don't blame Sterling for that. I'm not going to be one of these knuckleheads, one of these meatheads in the MMA community that's like, fuck you, Sterling, should have carried on. You know, he had the right to do what he did. Jan shouldn't have landed the knee. All I will say is, it's just an unfortunate situation that Sterling had to make that call to behave like that because it was embarrassing for him it tarnishes his legacy and the referee should have made the decision for him the knee that landed was substantial as soon as that knee landed ref should just wave the fight off award the disqualif disqualification win to sterling don't make him go through the embarrassment of having to continue to play act and kind of like pretend to be more hurt than he is because that's just embarrassing is not good for the sport so it was a horrible situation uh yan definitely deserved to be disqualified it was the only fair outcome you know what i mean Aljamain should not have had to have continued after that knee uh, but he could only win by miracle and he got it so i'm really salty and i don't know why like i say it wasn't a particularly big loss i mean i didn't even lose that much money i just feel like you know, we put a lot of work into research in these fights. And to literally read a fight perfectly. And then, like, have that reward taken away from you. It sucks. Because, like, we do work really hard. And it was a brutal week last week. Like, it was a, it was a lot of hours spent in front of a computer grafting. And um, it was just annoying. Thankfully, we, like, I don't, I can't say we are. I don't know how everyone got on. Thankfully, I did make a pretty decent profit. On Saturday night. So I don't feel like it would feel a lot worse. If I'd taken a big hit financially. But it was all good. And um, yeah. Just still salty man. Still triggered. Obviously we had a bet on Adesanya as well. In the main event. And um, I just feel like. Uh, I just feel like. Is he really underperformed quite bad. If I'm being perfectly honest with you. I don't want to take anything away from Jan Blakovic. He's alright. Like he's a decent fighter. Do I think he's the best light heavyweight in the world not a fucking chance do i think he's in the top five best light heavyweights in the world not a fucking chance do i still think izzy's a bad matchup for him yes but i think izzy performed is uh, underperformed it's one of those things where you know 
you you can't you you're gonna have bad nights at the office. There's a lot of pressure on these guys to show up and perform. And I just don't feel like Izzy fought very smart. And I just don't feel like he performed that well. I feel like Izzy has talked talked himself into a position where on Saturday night he may have felt like he needed to come out and put on a big performance. You know, Izzy was going for the two-division championship. He's got a lot of high-profile sponsors. He's one of the biggest stars in the UFC now. And I honestly feel by his performance on Saturday... He kind of forced the performance and ended up not performing very well. You know, if you look at Izzy in that fight, to me, he was guilty of headhunting a little bit too much. And like, you know that saying, when you try to win a fight by knockout, you often end up losing a decision. I feel that's what happened to Adesanya. You know, in the in the live betting group, in my commentary on Saturday night... You know, right from early on in the first round, I was calling out the fact that for some reason, Adesanya was trying to set Blakovic up for the question mark kick. If you go back and watch the fight, like he tried to set him up for it seven or eight times. I've never seen Izzy throw so many flashy question mark kicks like that. And let's be real, Blakovic is a 38-year-old kickboxer. Tough Polish fighter, great chin. He's probably had a hundred fights in his life, right? God knows how many sparring sessions. You're not going to catch a guy like that with a question mark kick. But Izzy went to it over and over again, loading up on power strikes. What was really disappointing about this performance from Izzy for me was he showed Yoel Romero and, uh, you know, Paulo Barraquinha Costa a lot of respect. He respected their power. He respected how dangerous they were. And because he respected how dangerous they were, neither guy could really get near him. I don't think Barraquinha landed a punch in the fight. You know, Izzy played the role of Matador, you know, stayed on the outside, counter-struck, and used his speed, his length, and his technique against lesser skilled opponents to, you know, pick up relatively easy wins without putting himself in any danger. This was really, really disappointing, this performance, because, you know, from the end of the first round, Jan was starting to breathe very heavily. At 38 year old, years old, he's not going to be catching a second wind. Jan was visibly tired by the end of the first round and I think that's perhaps what played into Izzy's poor performance perhaps when he saw Yan was getting tired he started to try and take him out to make a statement but all that ended up happening is that by head hunting you allowed Yan to rack up his own strikes and rounds ended up being closer than they needed to be which you know eventually enabled Yan to steal rounds with takedowns late on right but the most disappointing thing about this performance for me was you know Yan stands very heavy on that lead leg I've never seen Jan, Jack, Jan uh, Blakovic check a leg kick. And he was so tired by the end of that second round that he was essentially a sitting duck to Adesanya. Had Adesanya just gone to, you know, choppy range finding strikes and racked up volume, you know, he really could have caused Jan a problem. If you go back and watch Borokinia versus Adesanya, by the end of the first round, you know, literally after five minutes, Borokinia's left leg was purple. Like he could barely like he could barely walk on it. It was purple. Yan within two rounds was gassed, flat footed, breathing heavy, standing heavy on the lead leg, and not doing a particularly good job of reading Izzy and countering him when Izzy came forward. Instead of fucking about setting Yan up for knockouts and question mark kicks, you would have just hammered the lead leg and chipped away at him with a jab. He likely would have been too immobilized, too tired and too hurt to even hit those takedowns in round four and five. So it was just a real disappointing performance for me for Izzy. I feel like he went out there to make a statement. He went out there to get a highlight reel knockout. He went out there to back up all his talk. And in the process, got out-veteraned, outsmarted, and outperformed by a, you know, a 38-year-old guy who isn't great, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. You know, you get these certain fighters come along and you know all the stars kind of align for them, right? They rack up a few wins under, you know, fortunate circumstances under certain stylistic opponents. And, you know, the win-loss record looks very impressive on paper, but it kind of masks the reality of their skill set. It kind of papers over the cracks. Eventually, these guys get found out. Um, and I feel that is what we're seeing with Yan at the moment. And I really am shocked that Izzy wasn't the guy to kind of expose how average Yan is. But, 
you know, that's mixed martial arts. What I would say is, um, Izzy is very, 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 very lucky that there aren't many strong wrestlers in the middleweight division because he'd be in big trouble if there were. He looked hopeless off his back in the fourth and fifth round. Usually when you see Izzy get taken down, he's like a spring. He's immediately able to get to his knees and scramble back up to his feet. But in the fourth and fifth round, he just accepted being on the bottom. And even more worryingly, he looked exceptionally weak off the bottom. So if that doesn't bring Kimeyev out of retirement, I don't know what will. Because if I was Kimeyev sat at home watching how weak Adesanya was off his back, I'd be on the phone to Dana White saying, Dana, semi location, 185 t- title shot, man. I mean, Izzy is in big trouble if he fights a skilled wrestler. Jan Blakovic took him down easily and handled him on the ground. And he's a 38 year old Polish kickboxer. Imagine what an actual legit grappler would do to him. So, yeah, disappointing from uh, Izzy. So, overall, on official bets, uh, we are down about... What's that going to be? Um, down about three and a half units. Disappointing. It would have been a small profit had, uh, had, had, had Yang come through for us, but that's the way it goes. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we'll now take a look at the loose bets. So, loose bets, man. What a fucking night for loose bets. These started off insanely good absolutely insanely good so our win rate on these for saturday night was real real good so we had a uh, one unit bet on askarov he came through for us a one unit bet on dominic cruz he came through for us a three unit bet on adesanya that lost two unit bet on uros medic he came through for us three unit bet on sean brady a 0.5 unit bet on megan anderson two unit bet on piotr yan those two bets lost. Then we had a one unit bet on Kyla Phillips and a two unit bet on Amanda Lemos. So overall, we went one, two, three, four, five. So six and three on loose bets uh, for an overall profit of about one and a half units. But like I say, had Yang came through for us, um, you know, would, it would have been a decent bit nicer. But. Uh, I'm telling you, man, these loose bets are starting to really, 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 really get me excited. You know, obviously the chart isn't updated with March's results yet. And it's only a one and a half unit profit from last Saturday. But the win rate is getting me excited. Because when you can maintain a high win rate, that's when you can really use compound interest to grow accounts fast, grow money fast, you know, and, and, and really start to rack up decent profits. So the fact that most weeks... You know, we're hitting a decent win rate as well as a decent profit. And when we lose, you know, it, it's it's not, you know, when we take losses, it's, it's not a disaster. Like, it's a slight loss. I'm feeling really positive. And that's obviously reflected in this profitability chart. Just nice, steady, consistent gains, which is, you know, it's amazing. It's making me feel very excited. And like I say, you know, we had nine loose bets in the lab last weekend. And to only take a loss on three of them pretty fucking good especially when you consider the only kind of like legitimate loss was Adesanya because you know Anderson was you know a a half a unit flyer you know just a high risk gamble and uh, that realistically Piotr Jan should have been a winner right 99 times out of 100 that bet wins it was just a freak occurrence we took a loss so if we're being really you know uh, you know really uh, objective over this you know, say we include Yan as a win there. You know, on these bets, we would have gone seven and two. You know, if we disregard the uh, Anderson bet as just being a small, insignificant flyer, when seven and one. You know, Anderson, the or Adesanya, the only um, the only legitimate loss in nine bets. Um, pretty fucking incredible, actually. And if we can keep this up, I'm telling you, man, it's helicopters for everyone. And like I say. The, the, the thing that's getting me the most excited about these lab bets is there's no reason why we can't keep this going. You know, we've got a sample size of over 200 bets now. We've been tracking results for over a year. Nice, steady, consistent gains. No major variance. And there's nothing that can really disrupt our probabil- uh, profitability. Every single week, we sit there for 20, 30 hours a week doing fight research. We dig for strong positions to put our money. Like Dale says, we take the shotgun approach to these bets and just put our money in any situation where we feel a fighter has a notable advantage over their opponent. And, and it's working, and it has worked for a year. And I don't see any reason why this won't continue working. So I'm super excited for the future. And this is why we need to put a little bit less 
uh, emphasis, put 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 those official bets on less of a pedestal, because you know with a sample size of you know 200 bets, these these lab bets are really starting to prove themselves to me, and I'm getting very excited. So he obviously didn't have any tight bets. Main event bets we've already been over. Um, horrible night, horrible night. We went for Adesanya, Yan, and Anderson. They all lost. Um, and like I say, this is the only lab bet experiment at a loss at the moment. All lab bets are in profit, apart from the main event picks. Which, you know, like we've discussed, you know, in the live streams, it, I guess is to be expected, right? You know, with with most of the other lab experiments, we are cherry picking strong positions to put our money. Whereas with the main event bets, we are, you know, forced to put a pick in, gun to head. If you absolutely had to bet on this main event fight and your life depends on it, who would you go for? So because we're forced to bet. It's no wonder that our performance on this particular experiment is the worst out of all of them. Uh, because obviously you'd expect the odds on main event fights to be quite efficient. This was an experiment to see if our knowledge could kind of outdo that efficiency. And so far, the answer is no. Although, like I say, still a small sample size. Who knows, man? Another two years of events, uh, two years of results. Who knows where we'll be? Maybe we could turn around. Maybe this is just, you know, a year of variance. Who knows? With a sample size that small very very possible so we didn't have any over under bets uh for last week uh, no we didn't have any over under bets but as you can see again absolutely delighted with the way that over under bets are performing just nice steady consistent uptrend exactly like the loose bets the sample size on these isn't great still very early days but again feeling really positive about the over unders and then we had a phenomenal night on the even money bets, which was really, really encouraging to see. So we had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six even money bets on this card, and we went six and oh, which is a fan. Oh no, we didn't. Sorry, sorry. Oh fuck, we should have. We should have gone six and oh, right? Yeah, and should have won. Should have gone six and oh. We actually went five and one, but our only loss was 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 a questionable one, right? So we went for Cruz to beat Kenny. Uh, Elliot to beat Espinosa, Askarov to beat Benavidez, Cara France to beat Bonterin, Jan to beat Sterling, I still fucking triggered every time I say it, and Phillips to beat Yadong Song. So 5 and 1 for a phenomenal result, result. And where we were talking about the sample size on the loose bets is building up a bit now is 200 bets. And we were saying, you know, the sample size on over unders is still quite small, so we don't want to get carried away on it. What's really interesting about these these even money bets is back in December, I'd kind of written them off because I thought, you know what? Over a sample size of, say, 100 bets, producing a profit of 4.69 units isn't great, especially when you have kind of like this big variance, right? Big upswing, big downswing. That's not what you want. You want nice, steady, consistent results trending upward. But you know what? These are... Uh, these, these even money bets are starting to get me interested because remember again, the chart isn't updated for February's, uh, for March's results. So it doesn't include last weekend where, well, we would would have made like five units, four or five units off these these bets, right? Going five and one. So what's really, really interesting to me about these even money bets is uh, where have we gone? Where have we gone? Where have we gone? What's really, really interesting about these even money bets is that it is very possible that this was a very, very short term period of extremely bad variance. Because if we made a four or five unit profit last weekend on UFC 259, if if we, you know, just stay at that and don't make any more profit or loss this month, when we plot in March's results, this profitability chart is going to be up here somewhere, right? To, to tack on the extra four or five units of profit. And so what I find super interesting is we're establishing quite a decent trend line on these even money bets now. You know, if we just draw this in, uh, if we just get this in right here, right, you know, if we imagine that, say we draw, so the for, uh, the, the chart's going to be up here or somewhere where it gets plotted in, you know, for March with the last weekend's results. So you've got like a really nice trend line form in here. So, I am not willing to count these even money bets out just yet. I actually think it's incredibly positive that uh, that 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 we can hit like a five and one win rate. 
on an event like last weekend. And these results appear to be trending up, which is which is fucking fantastic. So the only other bet that we've got to cover are prop bets, which are obviously the, the least serious bet uh, that we deal in. But they are still a bet that we put out, so they must be tracked. And if we scroll all the way down, all the way down. Oh, okay, uh, fuck. Let's find last weekend's bet. Where will I find them? I'm going to need to go to... I might need to go into my website back end. Very sorry. I should have been prepared for this. Should have been prepared. Very sorry about this. We'll, be, we'll bring up the uh, last week's props now. Okay, there we go. So if we look at last week's props... Remember, our goal for props is if we... Wrong one, wrong one. I'm very sorry about this, guys. Just bear with me. Remember, the goal of props is if you win one prop, you will uh, likely be at a small loss. If you win two props, you'll likely be at a small profit or break even. And if you um, win three props or more, you're going to be at a decent profit. So our goal is always just to hit two props out of out of all of them. They're high risk. High reward, you're never going to have a very high win rate on them. So we hit Sean Brady to win inside the distance, which was a very, very nice winner. He came through for us. Lost on Askarov to win by knockout at TKO. Lost on Elliott to win by submission. Lost on Kyler Phillips to win in round three. We won on Amanda Lamos to win by knockout at TKO. Very, very nice. Lost on Rakic to win by submission. Uh, we won on Makachev to win by submission. Uh, lost on Yan to win by knockout at TKO. Lost on Anderson to win by knockout at TKO. So overall, we won three of these prop bets for an overall profit of about four and a half units. So not bad, not bad at all. Now, if we go down to the profitability chart, after a bit of a dip over the last few months, we can see a nice jump in profit to kick March off. So a little bit longer of a recap video this week. I guess I just needed... Uh, this is therapy for me, and I needed to... Uh, get get the PEN situation off my chest. I haven't got any Pokemon cards to open. Uh, so, yeah. Do I feel a little little bit better now? Not really. Probably need a good few days of research in me to take my mind off the PEN situation. And uh, hopefully we can get back on the horse and go again this week. So, thank you for watching. Remember, guys, keep an eye on the website for new bets to get added through the week. Keep an eye on the lab for new bets to get added through the week. Keep an eye on the prop bets article, uh, which has already been loaded into the lab. And we'll be adding new bets throughout the week. And again, hopefully we can make more money this weekend. Nice overall profit on almost everything this weekend, uh, aside from those official bets, which I very, very much need to rename. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below or stop by the chat room sometime and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Take care. I will see you in the next one. Nice one, guys.